In this tutorial we cover on-screen controls. Form Z makes extensive use of on-screen controls to modify objects after they are created. Objects such as spheres, cubes, and extruded shapes are called controlled objects, which means we can edit their parameters as often as we like. Controlled objects display the controls immediately after they are created. For example, extrude a rectangle and observe that yellow control arrows are displayed. Move the cursor over an arrow and it highlights red. Click once to start moving the control, then click a second time to end. Arrows represent constrained controls that can only be moved along the direction of the arrow. Since this object is an extruded rectangle, the arrow controls are constrained to the length, width, and height only. The controls are visible until you start creating another object or click on another tool. Click on the Spine Through Points icon and the controls are no longer visible. We'll show you how to view these controls again in just a moment. For now, let's extrude a curve using the Spline Through Points tool. Observe that we have an arrow control for the extrusion height and point controls for the spline curve. These points represent free movable controls that are not constrained. Just like the arrows, move the cursor over a point and it highlights red. Click once to start moving, then click a second time to end. Since these are free movable points, we can move them anywhere we want parallel to the reference plane, or to move them perpendicular to the reference plane, after you start moving the point, press and release the Command Can Mac or the Control Can Windows to toggle the perpendicular switch. Select the Pick tool and the controls disappear. To make the controls visible again, hold the Shift key down and select both objects. In the Tool Options palette, click on the Show Controls button and the controls are visible again. Click the Hide Controls button and the controls are hidden. This button is applied only to the selected objects, thus each object retains its own Show Controls status. Click the Show Controls button again to make them visible. Click the Pick tool in a blank area to deselect the objects and the controls remain visible. Most tools don't operate on object controls. For example, switching to the Boolean Union tool will hide the controls. Switching back to the Pick tool will show the controls again. Drag the controls for the box and observe that length, width, and height are numerically displayed in the Tool Options palette. Turn Grid Snapping on and observe that the values snap to an even increment based on what your grid snap is set to. Here we have the grid snap set to the default value of 2 feet, so the height changes in even increments of 2 feet. You can also type in values. For example, drag the height arrow, then type in 20 feet, enter. And the height is now 20 feet. There's no need to click in any input field because Form Z automatically highlights the active field for you. You can pick multiple points by having the Pick Tool active and holding the Shift key down and selecting multiple points. Now move to the Move tool and notice that the points remain highlighted. So simply click and drag the multiple selected points and click again to place them. In order to deselect the points, then click the Pick tool and click a blank area and the multiple points are deselected. You can also pick multiple points within the transformation tools. For example, with none of the points picked, select the Rotate tool. Hold the Shift key down and select a few points. Release the Shift key and the cursor changes from a plus to an arrow indicating that the transformation is ready to be executed. Click a position for the center of rotation. Click a start point of the rotation and drag the mouse. And click a third time to end the rotation. Notice that the controls are still shown but no longer highlighted. When using the controls to change the shape of an object, it's sometimes useful to delete points. For example, we can right click on any point and select the delete option and the control point is deleted from the object. Let's conclude this video with just a few more examples of controlled objects with on-screen controls. Numerous tools generate controlled objects, such as the stair tool. Simply click on a path and a 3D stair is generated. 
The on-screen controls let us interactively modify the stair width, the height, and we can also modify the path that that stair follows. All this information is also located within the Tool Options palette. So as we change these controls interactively in the modeling window, you can see that they get updated in the Tool Options palette. We can also change these parameters numerically. Simply type in the value that you want, hit Enter, and it's updated in the modeling window. Another example of a controlled object would be an object generated with the Sweep tool. Simply click on a face, and then click on a path, and that face is swept along the path. There's numerous on-screen controls that we can use to further edit that swept object after it's created. For example, we can modify the path. We can also modify the source, which was the face that we selected. So I can grab the controls and move that to reshape that if we want. We can also change the alignment of how that face aligns with that uh, path that it follows. We can scale it, rotate it, and move it up or down to control how it aligns with that path. And that's the advantage of being able to modify using on-screen controls these objects after they're created. And how about the Revolve tool? Yet another tool that allows you to create controlled objects in Bonsai 3D. Simply click a face, click a segment, and that face revolves around the segment to generate a revolved object. Plenty of on-screen controls that can be used to further modify that object afterwards. Change the revolve angle. We can modify the original face shape that's being revolved to create that revolved object. And all these parameters that we're changing can also be numerically modified within the Tool Options palette. Even simple shapes, such as those generated with the primitive tools, offer numerous on-screen controls. For example, with the torus, we can interactively or numerically modify the major or minor radius and the horizontal or vertical closure angles after the object is created. And this concludes the on-screen controls video tutorial.